Hey, McCathlon Gamer, welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball. This is episode number 18. Now at 50 and 30, 9 and 1 in our last 10, the team is playing ridiculously well at the moment. Those couple of changes we made to the pitching staff are working out famously right now. So we pushed back at Reno, but they're doing fairly well. They've won four straight. So they, they are keeping pace. Uh, we have moved ahead of Irving Keystone. So at least at this moment, we are fractionally ahead of the Chasers for the promotion spot. Uh, we, we sit second, two games behind Charlotte Raging Bulls on, on top of the league. And then we really have what is becoming a pretty small contest of, I'd say, four teams unless Tacoma were to kind of introduce themselves in on that contest but uh, we're, we're looking at just four teams Charlotte myself uh, Irving and Reno four teams that have a good shot at least at the moment of promotion but our magic number for the playoffs is still 63 games meaning we're we, we still got a long ways to go yet so let's not get ahead of ourselves we've played 80 in a regular baseball season we're a game away from halfway but our season is a bit shorter but it seems to not be steady which is odd uh, we don't have the even numbers every single season i don't know why that is but it is what it is let's go ahead and push forward uh let's say 10 games and and see how the team is doing uh, after 90. The strange thing is that the last 10 was not good. We went 5-5 five and five over the last 10. And yet, we have moved into the top spot. It's a close contest uh, among the four teams. It's still a close contest. It's within three games from first to fourth right now. But we are now top. Charlotte and Reno are tied one game behind us. And then Irving is just that few games back. And out of the four teams... There was a two and eight, a couple five and fives, and a six and four in the last ten, meaning not faring terribly well <laughs> are the top teams at the moment. Uh, that has given kind of the second tier of teams. They have gained a little ground on the top teams, meaning it could still be more than four teams competing for this thing in the end. But at 55 and 35, we're still having our, ourselves a heck of a season right now. But we've got a ways to go yet. Let's keep pushing along. Nowicki should be back in a week or two. So somewhere right around the next 10 games, we're going to have another pitcher come back. He was the top pitcher, and that'll give us a, a good time to judge kind of where we're at. It's late July now. It's almost August. Uh, things are going to start to kind of change up on what our options are anyway. It took him a year to get going, but Matt McCormick just won batter of the month and has been on fire here lately. Now at 100 games played this season, we have 61 wins, 39 losses. That was a 6-4 and four stretch. That was enough for Reno to match us and be placed ahead of us, at least at the moment. But we have identical records. And then two games behind is both Irving and Charlotte Raging Bulls. So we have a two-game advantage over the two chasers as we are starting to get a little bit closer to the end of the season. Now, while 6-4 and four is certainly okay, because that is right on par with our win percentage, 61%, right? So that's 6 out of every 10 games, essentially. So 6-4 and four is good. That was an average stretch. But just yesterday, uh, our new man, our, our new man, the draft pick, the, the top pitcher, uh, again with another injury, elbow inflammation, four weeks, and then also... The guy we were waiting on getting back uh, isn't making it back right now. So Ramsey David, he'll be out for four weeks. And then Nowicki, as they were saying, he should be back any day now. Uh, and then realistically, it was saying we had one to two weeks. Then all of a sudden, now it says unknown. Uh, and it's also the elbow inflammation for the both of them. So in the meantime, uh, called up to... The main roster coming back, he started the season with us, is uh, Joseph Adamitz. Adamitz did good when when we sent him down to, to AAA, 18 games. 4-5 and five isn't the greatest record, but he threw 100 innings, had a 2.93 ERA, 
and was showing that he was ready to come back up. Uh, five and a half was the ERA in just four starts at the beginning of the season, 0 and 2. Let's hope he does a little bit better than that this time around. Uh, we could certainly use some wins from him while we are waiting for either a Nowicki or uh, Ramsey David to get back as soon as possible. This could hurt our chances a little bit. Let's go ahead and push forward again, another 10 games, and just kind of keep chuck, uh, trucking along and see you know where this is headed because right now we are right there in the mix amongst four teams. Playoffs looking very likely right now. But are we looking at promotion here in our first competitive season? Have we turned things around that quickly? Over the last 10, three out of the four teams performing well. Reno, the only one struggling. They've dropped three games behind us. We were 7-3 and three during this stretch. And of those three losses, one of them was accounted to the guy we brought up from AAA, giving him another shot. I actually kept him around a couple extra days because right after... Uh, the the last scene there, that 10 games ago, Nowicki was ready to be coming off of the injured reserve list. So I waited a couple days, let that guy get a start, which he ended up losing that game. We sent him back down to AAA and then bringing Nowicki in. I wanted to give Nowicki just a little bit longer, uh, and then you know you catch him the next time around. So that gave him about an extra week of recovery time before he actually gets into the rotation and, and picks up a start. But 7-3, good stretch. 68-42 and 42 overall right now. Best record in the league. We're at two wins but five losses. So that's a, what, three-and-a-half game advantage over Irving. And then we are at the, what, three and six. So four-and-a-half game advantage over Charlotte. And those magic numbers are getting much, much smaller. So we're just two days away from the trade deadline, but also roster expansion. The way things are going, I don't want to make any moves. I think we've got the right personnel in place to, to make a run. We want to keep the, the gel that has happened amongst this team. We want to keep that going. So, you know, we might bring a, a few guys up in the roster expansion, but otherwise I think that's going to be about it. We'll use this team to see out this season and give them a shot, see how they do. That is, unless somebody is really doing awful and I've kind of missed on it, Nowicki is going to be, be getting the next start. So uh, that should be, I think he's had one. Yes, he's had one start during those last 10. This was about to be his next one. In terms of the bullpen, uh, Kevin Kelly's not doing great with a 5.5 ERA, but he's also got the the fewest number of innings pitched on our bullpen staff, and, and, you know, he's okay. He is okay. He's doing just fine. So pitching staff, no big concerns there. As for how our lineup is looking, here's what we're seeing at least for... The top-notch guys, Luke Rayleigh hitting 327, Hudson's hitting 304, Ibarra's hitting 299, so we are getting some solid numbers. Uh, we've got two guys tied with 24 homers, McCormick and Rayleigh. Uh, Yerzy's got 19. Uh, McCormick's got 71 RBI, so he really is coming into his own this season. Uh, that, again, that's the catcher that we drafted last year, and he really struggled in that first season, but he's doing fantastic now. Rayleigh's got 69 RBI right behind him. Lamboy might not be cranking out a bunch of homers, but he's got 57 RBI. Uh, Barra, Yerzy, both doing well in that department as well. I mean, I, I'm so happy with how the team has done this year. What a turnaround from a year ago. Uh, Corey Nebel has that whip under one. He did pick up an injury. It was just day to day in the uh, that last little stretch of ten games. So he's bounced back from that one pretty quick. You can see last season, Kansas City. He was with Kansas City and managed to keep an ERA under one, but that was only eighteen innings. This year, you know, he's 48, 44 innings pitched, and keeping a similar, roughly one point oh ERA. Um, McCormick is doing well, and Cisco is backing him up decently. In the infield, 
uh, Hudson, just looking kind of briefly here, nobody's doing poorly. I mean, you've got a couple backups that are right on zeros on the wins above replacement. You know, they're not doing great, but they're they're hanging in there for us. Same, you know, Seth Beer back up there as well. Uh, Pantoja, <laughs> or let's see, he was from Mexico. Uh, Pantoja, that's what it was. Pantoja, even he's doing well with a 1.0, but Seth Beer is supposed to be starter. So there's, there's kind of your one weakness, maybe in the outfield. Uh, maybe we could use an upgrade out there as Ibarra and Rayleigh are obviously doing fantastic, but that last spot, mm, maybe we could, maybe we can use an upgraded outfielder before this trade deadline. Uh, maybe I'll take a quick look at that and see if there's something out there that I could find to give us a bit of a boost. Seth Pierre is supposed to be third in the lineup and he's just really not producing a whole lot. Uh, but again, that pressure off Luke Rayleigh McCormick holy cow those guys are just tearing it up back there and that's giving us a lot of quality throughout the lineup because Yerzy's up there on some of the lists and you know none of the guys are doing terrible Kyle Holder down at number nine yeah he's struggling a little uh, looking at the stats and rankings you know batting wise it's clear we're number one we're, we're number one in virtually everything uh Walks is the only area where we're outside of the top four. When it comes to the pitching stats, ERA, ERA is fourth. So we are actually doing pretty dang good considering that most of our stats are around 7th to 11th, meaning very middle of the road. And yet somehow, at least, you know, the overall, oof, actually there's, there's a key detail. Runs allowed is ninth. ERA is fourth. So we are committing far too many errors. Far too many errors. And we did make a couple sacrifices to the defense to get the offense better. And it shows. It does show. All right, so we're not going to go major on the trade front, but we are going to make one or two smaller moves to try to make something happen. Now, of course, I've, I've really thinned out my minor league roster this year eliminating a lot of the players who didn't need to be there so we don't have as much trade value i mean there's plenty of players to potentially trade quality players to potentially trade and try to trade up for but we don't have the quantity right now so uh, this actually might be the only move we end up making jose ramirez second baseman two and a half star kind of guy really good second baseman Fairly good third baseman, fairly good shortstop, decent hitter, could come in and, you know, help. Downside, fragile. Upside, 24, has trade value down the road if we don't want to stick around and hang on to him, especially if we see he gets injured once or twice early on. This this could be a just help us right now this season and then maybe flip him for somebody else. But... If he can stay healthy as a backup, yeah, he's good to have around. I mean, he's last season, this season, last season between AAA and and playing at the pro level where he's been hovering between the two, he's done well. I mean, his combined wins above replacement this year is four, if you count his minor league effort. And to get him, we're giving up a 30-year-old reliever in AAA and a free agent starter that I signed this year who's down in double A. Top teams all go in six and four, Reno go in five and five, meaning we held our gap or even increased it in one case. And that's putting us now at 7446, which is oh gosh, where are we? Two wins and five losses, so three and a half ahead of Irving still. And I think that's four and a half still ahead of Charlotte Raging Bulls. So things are, are, are good on that front. In fact, it's a full five games now ahead of Charlotte Raging Bulls. Uh, Reno following further back, four games now. Our chances are getting better. I mean, we, we've got a full four-game advantage over the nearest challenger for the promotion spots. Magic number getting smaller and smaller. Uh, 
our magic number higher than the others because we have the closest division rival, right? The four best teams, three divisions, and two two of those four are from my division. So that's that's a big one you got to watch out for because it's a pretty big drop off to Columbus. Columbus might be nine and one and have won seven straight, and they're definitely getting themselves into the wild card situation. But you know we're we're ten game twelve games ahead of them. I'm I'm not worried about a team that far back. Ramsey David coming back just in time, and even though all season long John King has been one of our best, in fact he was ten and zero. He is cold right now. He's 11-2. and two. He's lost a couple straight. His ERA has risen by more than half a point. So we're going to bump him out of his next start for the moment. Go ahead and give it to Ramsey David, who has been great other than his very first start. Let's hope his first start coming back from injury isn't like his first actual start that he picked up uh, at this level. But... Right now, I think we're in a a win now kind of mode. We want to get every win we can get our hands on. Yeah, yeah, down to the stretch here. Thirty wins over five hundred. I mean, we're doing really well on that part. And uh, upcoming ERA is this next game is going to be maybe the tough one, and then we have a couple easier ones after that. No ten game stretch this time. I think we're about four games into the future. And we are on a bit of a win streak here. We've won six straight, eight out of ten. We hit the 80 win mark, which is giving us a bit of an advantage over everybody. In fact, Reno is sitting second right now, exactly six games back. Could all change very, very fast. You know, a few days, a couple losses, and things can look very different. Over the next few games, we have some guys that have just been okay which means with our offense and the way our pitching staff has been, we've certainly got a chance to win, you know, two out of three of those, most likely. If we can keep that up just a little bit longer, I think we're looking at promotion. So from last place to last place, but eh, we fixed a lot of our problems to, okay, we fixed our problems and, oh, right, promotion? Now talk about flipping the script. All right, let's let this week play out. I'm, I'm doing the quick sim right now, just kind of seeing how it goes because I'm a little too nervous to take it one day at a time, 82 and 47 now. Uh, we did pick up a loss there after we had had nine straight, but 83 and 47, we get the next one, and it looks like we've guaranteed a playoff spot now, 84 and 48, 85 and 48. So eight and two, streak continues. The gap, six and a half over Reno. We're looking at... Reno has slipped behind Irving. So Irving's the closest, 79-54, and that is, what, six? Six games behind? So we're still six games over second place, and we are six and a half over third. Charlotte struggling to keep up. In fact, they're just struggling to finish off, but we're starting to see teams that are eliminated. Those magic numbers are all coming together. We've guaranteed a wild card. What I want is that promotion spot. Why not, right? Try to get it right up into that next league. But <laughs> how do we go from there if we're suddenly... Oh, man, that's going to change things, isn't it? Because we are built for uh, low budget, just hanging in there. I don't know how competitive we would be at that next level. But you figure if we're doing this here, you figure we'd at least be competitive down there. It's you know, It's not the jump to the actual major leagues. It's the second tier. We might still be okay there. So it turns out that even though the magic number was five or something like that, we actually only had two games left in the season. That was it. We were we were done and dusted, and we won both of those. So you better believe it. It has happened. 87 and 48 final regular season standings. That is the best record in the league. In fact, that's the best record in the entire league as Monterey at 80 and 55 was the best over there. 76 and 59. I mean... That Reno, Charlotte, both would have gotten promoted on that. The only other 80-win teams, Monterey and Irving, right at 80. So 87 and 48 was excellent. Folks, we've done it. 
the highest scoring offense that was the big turnaround we we had the defense that 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 was so funny how last year we improved the pitching finally off the bottom and got it you know to be almost middle i mean it was bottom third but it, it, it definitely wasn't last and and while the the batting had ultimately improved the numbers were fairly similar because all the production came from two guys in that first season and and there was enough production from those two that everybody else combined over the second season kind of made up for the production of those two in the first season. And and that second season, it was all just two-star guys. I mean, we really, really turned that around. We took a lot from our minor league system to make that happen. A lot of moves from that AAA, AA group to get a serviceable roster for this year. But that roster this year first in average first in runs and then the defense fourth in era so we've really really made that progress and with 87 wins we are going to be promoted to the second tier which is just incredible can't believe it all right well there's the status promotion is secure best record in the league wow playoffs coming We'll see what happens in those playoffs, and then we will get through our offseason. Honestly, I, I don't care what happens in the playoffs because it's third tier, right? This is not playing for the real World Series. It's playing for the third tier playoffs. Be nice to win a title. Sure. But it's not necessary. It's about the promotion spots, especially, you know, if you miss out on the promotion, I think you're aiming more for that title. You have more to play for we've already got the promotion i'm already thinking about next year <laughs> i've already I've, I've already got what we call in the u.s senioritis right i'm already going oh we're getting promoted <laughs> what's next what's, what's next job career college anyway i'm excited for what's to come dang we've pulled it off okay uh but yeah we still have playoffs to do first so We'll get to that next episode. I'm the Cathon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.